Hi everyone, this is Greg Gilpin, and as you know, or maybe you don't know, I'm doing a series of interviews with music educators all across the country, and I wanna just bring ideas and suggestions for remote, uh, remote teaching uh, for teachers who are struggling uh, with ideas, and you just need ideas at this time. It's a positive platform, um, and it's in order just to simply reach out and to help each other. And today, I am so excited and I'm honored to be talking with the Ruth Dwyer. Many of you know Ruth from her outstanding choral publications. I've programmed many. Uh, her work with the Indianapolis Children's Choir and you've probably experienced her presentations and of workshops and also her guest conducting at numerous state conventions throughout the country. Um, I know uh, that I've snuck in a few rehearsals. She didn't know this. But I, when I do, if I know she's there, I'm sneaking in, I'm taking notes the whole time in the back. I love it. Very inspiring. And uh, I'm going to have her talk a little bit more about what she's involved with. But without a doubt, Ruth is recognized as a leader with the treble voice and with, uh, with children's choirs and is respected also uh, as a Kodai educator. Um, we are lucky to have her here, here in Indianapolis. And... She has a brand new YouTube channel. So write this down, Ruth Dwyer, Muse Ed, M-U-S-E-D, which actually spells mused. Did you know that? <laughs> know. So you can type just Ruth Dwyer Mused and it's gonna come up and make sure you give it a like. She's got videos on there. We'll talk about that. Hello, Ruth. Thank you for joining today. Hello, Greg. I'm really excited about being here with you. Thank you, that's great, I'm excited too. Okay, so first thing, why don't you fill in the blanks uh, for everyone, um, new and old, about all that you teach and conducting and writing and all of that. Well, it's, you know, um, we wear many hats as musicians. So um, I am still with the Indianapolis Children's Choir. I'm the Director of Education. I think this is my 32nd year with the Indianapolis Children's Choir. Wow. Um, I'm also now the composer in residence, so that's a nice honor to have been given in the last couple of years. I'm the director, the artistic director of the Columbus, Indiana Children's Choir, which is a division of ICC, but I get to do my own thing down there, and I work with the Columbus, Indiana Philharmonic uh, and David Bowden, Dr. David Bowden, down in Columbus mm -hmm. through that. Um, at ICC, I supervise all the curriculums for everything from our preparatory choirs, through our high school choirs. So I, as you know, I've written our curriculum books and things like that. And right. then I, I kind of help teachers pick and choose what from the curriculum they should be doing. It always pertains or hopefully pertains to um, teaching basic music skills, bringing an understanding to reading and writing music, but also we always want it to pertain to whatever repertoire we happen to have chosen for our performances. Right. So we try to tie that in. Um, I continue to write new materials for that all the time so there are supplemental things for that i often just go okay i'm gonna write something else i'm tired of doing all that so i'll do something else <laughs> and um I, as you know i have my own choral series i'm most one of the things i'm most proud of is that i taught public school music for indiana for 20 years i taught in seymour indiana and uh, then i taught in wayne township here in indianapolis and 10 of those years I was teaching for ICC at the same time. I also teach for Butler University. Um, sometimes I'm an adjunct for a class, but right now with all the e-learning, of course, they've consolidated their staff. Um, more recently, I work with the interns uh, from Butler education classes and conducting classes. They come into the ICC rehearsals and they have an opportunity wow. to work with ICC kids. Oh my so, gosh, how lucky Under are the they? guidance of Josh Petty and Ruth Dwyer and various people, you know, we get to- I need to get in on that. <laughs> okay, no problem. <laughs> Actually, I've had three adults come in and be interns who said, can I come do this? And I said, well, you have to, you know, apply. There's no money involved right. at all. It's, it's, we just say you apply and you have to show your com commitment and you come in and you get to work with kids. Um, other than that, I, te I teach preschool for ICC. I teach the four year olds. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, like I've mentioned, I teach anywhere from a three year old to a 30 year old. Yeah. So, you know, with my new YouTube channel, it's very, it's, it's just very concise. It's 
here's a lesson to show your little one at home and they'll have fun, but they'll get something musical out of it. Um, right now it's, it's going to be, you have information from preschool activities for preschoolers through high school, but right now um, it's geared more toward my own choirs at ICC because I conduct four choirs. And yes, we've moved to virtual learning. Uh, how do you conduct a choir virtually? That's been very interesting and very challenging. So um, we're all learning a lot of things. Right, you know, and um, I love any, you know, any kind of thing. I always tell teachers, look, if you can get one idea even at a convention, you know, hooray, you have great success. That's my thing is I want one new idea. But when I watch you, um, and I've watched your videos and watched you when you do your Facebook Live or, or, or those posts. Um, even uh, everyone, teachers, if you teach high school, um, really go uh, and, and watch these because they are springboard for your own, you know, creativity on what you can do with your high school or middle school. Believe me, everyone needs to know where dough is. And, you know, she does, uh, Ruth does these exercises of finding dough. There is great uh, learning here that you can jump from for your older kids. So uh, don't ever do that. I taught at Vandercook one year for, I would do it every year for a week. And I brought in Artie Almeida one time. I'll share this story really quickly. I brought in Artie Almeida and um, she, uh, all my high school teachers, about 50% were high school. And they looked at me like, really? We're going to have an <laughs> elementary teacher all day long? Mm -hmm. I said, watch her teach. And at the end, they went, it's a master class in teaching. Just watch That's the right. So don't ever discount another teacher if they're teaching another you know, level. You're going to learn something. And you will. Uh, middle school, high school, watch. Um, you will learn some great things uh, that she's uh, putting on there. So thank you, Ruth, for that. What, what is your current situation then uh, right now? Are you getting to teach Annie or what? Well, currently, we are all teaching through Zoom. Um, as best we can. I was late in coming into that because of my age, and it was a very steep learning curve for me. Um, I'm really in about my fourth week of teaching virtually with most of my choirs, my fifth week with my Columbus choir, because they were on spring break and okay. when all this started, and so um, I started them a little early. I think... Um, it was very intimidating at first to uh, realize, first, I have an old computer. For instance, this interview is on my husband's brand new computer that we just happened to purchase right before all this happened. And it simply couldn't have happened, this interview couldn't have happened with what I had on hand. And I'm very thankful that we decided it was time to upgrade and get a computer for him. Um, I started out with only interacting with the kids via email. And that really worked because the Columbus kids, many of them are rural uh, kids on farms and they have very limited internet. It's, and Zoom's actually hard for them and it comes and goes and all sorts of things. So um, what I found is at the beginning, my Columbus kids, I gave them one very simple thing to do that forced them to respond to me. Do this, respond to me. Whereas with my ice, my Indianapolis kids, we, we had to do it in a certain way for the whole program and give the parents a lot of information about how we're going to do this and everything. And it took them longer to get on board because there was too much information up front. Oh. So I think um, one of the things you mentioned is watching me is so often considered a master's class in education. I think one thing I teach teachers best of all ages, teachers who teach everything, is how to manage a classroom, how to make quick decisions, how to determine what's the most important thing you want to get across in a lesson plan. And that's what you have to do when you're teaching virtually. When I was uh, started out with just emails, the first email I sent out said to the kids, oh, we're not going to be able to have rehearsal next week when you come back from spring break because we think this is gonna happen. So we're gonna go ahead and do a lesson. Uh, here's your lesson for ne next week. Go watch this video. And it was Wartburg College, Ain't No Grave. 
Wow. with sign language, fabulous video. And I knew that their parents would look at it first because of the kind of community they are to see if it was something they wanted their child to see. Okay. So I said, look at this video, uh, figure out what the name of the song is, who the, compo who the arrangers are, which is uh, Ivory and Caldwell, were the arrangers, Ain't No Grave. And tell me two things it made you feel when you watched it and listened. That's all awesome. I asked. I brought it down to look at this, listen to it. How do you feel? And that's the hardest part to get across to singers and families. Parents don't understand oftentimes, yes, their child loves to come and sing in choir. And yes, the kid loves to be with their friends. But for so many kids, it's about where they feel and where they feel free to think about how they feel and to express how they feel. I received the most wonderful answers back and I just made a list. I put at the top of the list because I respond to every child and every parent and I'm teaching over 200 kids virtually and I respond to everything every week. So I'm in constant communication with them. But my response to that first one was, um, here's what I like about this piece and how it makes me feel. Here are a list of the two words from each child that responded. And I just made a column of words. I'm getting cold chill bumps thinking wow. about it because it was so beautiful. And then I had a list that said, and by the way, some parents participated. These are the parents' responses. And that was sort of a hook to say, this is gonna be fun, it's gonna be interesting, your parents are gonna like it, we're all gonna learn something new in this new setting. And I think on that very first one, by doing it that way, I had 80% of the kids participate from that choir. Now, my other choirs, it's much a lower percentage. And I think there are a lot of teachers that that really worries them if they're a community-based choir like us, they pay tuition, they're not being forced to do this, they do it because they want to. But you know what? Some of them are watching it, they're just not responding to me, is what I'm finding out. Because when <laughs> I finally turned, I finally learned how to do Zoom, okay? <laughs> and, and I finally turned to a Zoom rehearsal just last week. I did my first Zoom okay. rehearsals. Okay. Actually, just this week, at the beginning of the week, Monday and Tuesday. And I added more kids from every choir because of how they learn. Here's what I know about teaching this way. It is no different from how we teach in our classroom. There are three kinds of learners. Kinesthetic, mm -hmm. auditory, and visual. There are three kinds of teachers. <laughs> Kinesthetic, <laughs> auditory, and visual. And we as teachers, we're gonna go first to what we know best what makes us learn well and then and i had to do that to get started and now i'm reaching out to those other forms of learning like um like finding joe being an auditory teacher in a different way and you know using that youtube cha channel to help people i think one of the most important things i ever learned from a teacher was my supervising teacher at iu who was dr leon fosha for my uh, student teaching he came and observed me teach. And now you bear in mind, this is what, 43 years ago. And this still stays in my mind every time I step into a fr in front of people to talk or teach. Dr. Fosha watched me teach. He said, you're doing great, Ruth. Talk less, sing more. Yes. Talk less, sing more. I've had okay, to learn so that. Now, you know, you know, how do we do that virtually? Yeah. because you have to explain so much well that's what my youtube channel is about this is how you narrow it down this is the one subject the one goal and i list the goals for the teachers i i don't well i sort of talk about it i think on the videos but i tell them this was my goal in making that video and that's what i've learned about virtual teaching is that talk less sing more talk less get to the point play it again, do it again. Um, it's tough. Yeah. Don't you, um, don't you think that um, for those that are really 
uh, doing you know everything they can to remote teach. Uh, don't you think this is going to change lots of rehearsals in the fall? Uh, how we oh, do yeah. this? Mm -hmm. I just think we're going to go back and everybody's going to go back to the classroom and to the rehearsals and they're going to do it differently. And I think the kids are going to kind of come back differently. I know? think they're going to be better. Yes. I think that connection of learning how to listen and knowing the importance of being a teammate in a choir, that's the first thing that, that you have to help children understand. Now, my, my children's choir members are anywhere from a fourth grader to a ninth grader in ICC. Okay, so because our children are placed by their ability to sight read and their ability to hear harmony, I may have a fourth or fifth grader who's played violin for six years in a same choir with an eighth grader. But that's a, you know, you just got to learn how to choose the right music that makes everybody happy. Right. But I think the hardest thing for them to understand on Zoom is that they're not going to get to sing with each other. It, it just can't be done. It has to be they sing along with you, the teacher. But they are so loving seeing their community. Yes. They need their community. They'll they write to me and say, those are my that. people. Yes, they want right. one teacher was telling me that she goes, um, I have to tell everybody, okay, now, like in her voice lesson, she goes, okay, we have to quit talking because I know <laughs> you want to communicate, but we have to do this because they just are like so hungry to be with yes, each other. Yes, they are. So what I'm going to do with my next lesson, uh, you know, I just wrote my kids today and said, okay, the first Zoom went pretty well. Here's what I learned. And I said, first of all, you'll, I'm going to set it up. You, you can sign in 10 or 15 minutes before, and you can chat with each other. Oh. And then I'll start right at 630. And, and so I think that's going to help them create the, That's what they did at, at ICC. Yeah. They stood in the hallways for 15 minutes and talked. So I said, okay, I'll give you your hallway time. Yeah. The that's other thing genius. is, yeah, well, I, it just was logical. It's, it is, but it's... <laughs> well, it's going to help me too, because the way I'm taking attendance is I take a screenshot of the choir, because there are so many kids. You know, if I have 50 kids on three different pages, <sighs> it's, it's very hard. <laughs> so I just take a screenshot. So I told them that they have to be signed in, because I'm going to take a screenshot at 630, and that's attendance, okay. or whenever it starts, and that's attendance. Then I take a screenshot before we exit to see who stayed, okay. you know, and I don't lose them unless there's something going on at home, right. but they're all good. Right. But I think, um, I think what you're saying that choir will be different in the fall yeah. when we come back. Um, I think musically we'll, we'll be more attuned to one another. I think the energy level might be explosive at first just the pure joy of making music again with other people. Um, one thing I've found with e-learning is that kids who are super shy or kids who have anxiety problems, I have to talk them into coming into the Zoom meeting. And I say, just come and watch. I'll give you credit for just sitting there and watching and listening. And I was so joyful that one of the children that was, is one of my most anxious children who never wants to do anything by herself, but she loves choir. And I don't ask children to do things alone. It's always voluntary. Who would like to volunteer to sing this solfege paper for everybody? I never call on you in particular, unless you want to be called on, especially in this setting. You know, in this setting, it's so one-on-one, -on -one, everybody's gonna hear you. But this one child who was the most anxious child, and I begged her to come. I mean, she was sick in the morning because she was worried about it. I said, just come. I said, no, bring your kitty cat and let your cat sit on your lap. She did. That was her comfort zone. She talked more than anybody else at the end of class. <laughs> she was so excited to be a part of it. And she yeah. will be different when you, when you see her again in rehearsal. I bet she's a different person. Yeah, I hope so. I, yeah. And I hope she can maintain that joy of knowing how much we love her and accept her for who she is. Because, you know, ultimately, that's really what choir is about, is sharing the love of, of being human, uh, sharing the love 
of knowing there are people like you and you can relate to them and that there are people different from you that you can learn to relate to. Yeah. You know, and that's all we can ask. We have learned about what it is like to be human in yeah. this. We have oh, all real. learned about yeah. being human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. hope we have. I hope many have. Yeah. Uh, you know, some things that, um, especially if you're an unsure person like me, an older person learning how to use all these different devices, um, I just want people to know that you're out there to help. I'm out there to help. The Indianapolis Children's Choir, that we're one of very few community-based children's choirs who have maintained our program through this. A lot of community-based children's choirs, they don't have to keep teaching because they're not in a public school, but they tried for a couple of weeks and it was just so overwhelming and it's so sad to us. It's so overwhelming to them that very few have continued on. Hmm. So what we have decided to do, and Rob and Lana's like this too in Cincinnati Children's Choir and, and a few of my other friends, what we've decided to do is create all these things um, that other people can have, just like what you're doing with these interviews. We're putting everything out there. Here it is for free. That's why I started my channel. And I won't, it won't all be me. It'll be some of my ICC colleagues and people like that too. It's still my channel at this moment. But, you know, Josh is working really hard to keep our organization alive and thriving because we serve a lot of kids. And I don't care if your community choir has 10 kids or if it has 20 kids, even if you can't teach them this way, keep in touch with them. Um, keep in touch with them and say, here's some place you could go and, and listen to something and, and do something musical that'll help you when you come back in the fall. You know, and you know, folks are struggling with how do we do auditions? Yeah. You know, for a community-based children's choir, now's the time when we do auditions. So, you know, we're developing materials for that and we just, we give it away. <laughs> you know? Well, that's, that is great. And, uh, you know, unfortunately we're probably going to be doing this again, you know, that we're going to have to go <laughs> yeah. through this again with remote teaching, but, right. um, it's a great time to learn how to do it. And, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, so you're right. So everybody, I'm glad ICC is, is, uh, reaching out and can reach out to people outside of ICC. You know, teachers, I'm sure they can go to the website exactly. and mm -hmm. get information and help. Um, oh, sure. And they can, they can email us personally and say, do you have something on that? You know, we're real open and it's like, do this. What, I need help with this. Create one that does this, Ruth. Yeah. You know, whatever you want. We're, we have a, a teacher's ambassador group. And you know, that might be something other organizations can do. And we have a core person in our organization that reaches out to all the local teachers and say, and asks them what's missing. And that's how I came up with some of my ideas. We asked our teachers, what is too difficult for you to do? You're overwhelmed. You have too much. You have your own children you're teaching at home. <clears throat> what can we do? <clears throat> Excuse me. What can we do as an organization to give you materials that are ready used? Right, exactly. Oh, and that's just so helpful. There's just so many teachers that I'm finding, and you you <laughs> touched on it about this uh, the rural aspect. Yes. Uh, man, there's a lot of teachers that aren't even able to teach right now because they they either have to mail it, you know, mm -hmm. snail mail, right. mailing uh, packets. Yeah, and the kids have one computer. And believe me, if the parents are working from home, they don't get the computer. The parents are using. Right. It. Yeah. So there's just a lot of obstacles, but I think a, the, a common thing that everybody said in, in my interviews is that, you know what, just do something. Yeah. Don't worry about if it's perfect. Don't worry about what it is. Just communicate, like as you said, just communicate with them, if nothing else, and say, I'm thinking about you. I know we're not doing anything right now, yeah. but, but I'm, you know, email or send them a note, handwritten note. I, exactly. I, I miss you. I'm yes. choir and we're going to be back together. Yes. And I say that every time I t tell them something that I miss about being with them. This week, I miss this thing. I can't wait until we get together again and I can do this. I think keeping it simple is best for all of us because everything's so overwhelming. 
but keeping it positive, always saying, I can't wait until we meet again. I can't wait until we figure out how to do this virtual choir. You know, Josh figured it out. Now I have to figure it out. Ah, I'm going to go watch your interview. Go watch the interview. It'll really I will. <laughs> but, um, you know, and I'm getting the kids more involved. Um, I asked two really, really good students to make recordings. And we're going to, I'm going to learn how to do the virtual choir using those recordings from those kids. So it's just three, it's the same person three times. So be watching for that. Perfect. You know? But I think that the most important thing when we're teaching is to keep saying, this isn't forever. This isn't forever. Yes, I'm in that category of old people who has to stay home and wear my mask if I, <laughs> if I dare to go out. But this isn't forever. Nothing is, is forever. Right. You know, it, it goes on. Right. And that's the hardest thing for some people to understand is yeah. that we're here for the long run. We're not going to give up. Music is such a vital part of everyone's lives. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't watch a movie or television and yeah. not, not realize that there's background music that's creating the emotions that they want you to feel. That's you know, right. that's what it does. Exactly. I think, there'll be a, I think there'll be a huge renaissance uh, mm -hmm. when this is over. I, I hope, but I really do. I think people, no, they're missing it. They're missing the symphony. They're missing even the sports. I mean, people aren't getting that. I mean, right. everything, I think, especially in the creative arts, um, yeah. there'll be a big renaissance of how important it is and maybe put a little, you know, a support behind it, I hope. Is there any other teaching, you know, tips that you would share? You have filled this interview with so many takeaways. I haven't had to do anything, but listen, I love it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's, it's awesome. I'm going to go back and listen to this and take notes. There's just so many wonderful things that I can apply myself in the future. And um, I love it. Is there anything else you want to leave? I, I do have to ask you one thing okay. because I'm sure everybody's wondering, um, what's the painting behind you? Oh, that's the last painting that my mother painted uh, while she could still paint. My mother had Parkinson's disease for uh, 25 years, uh, and she literally painted. I mean, my mom was a tough dude. That's why I, I am who I am. I am my mother. I know, stock. <laughs> I know. She painted that painting by holding the paintbrush in one hand and her hand on the other hand because she had to control the trimmers. And that whole painting was painted that way. Oh. And it probably took her, I don't know, three or four weeks to do that. Wow. And I just thought, of all the things I want to have behind me, other than I have all my children's choir stuff and my teddy bears sure. and my bumblebees, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted my mother's presence oh. in, in this moment in time because my mother was, she was an astonishing human being. Hmm. Um, my dad died when I was 11 and left her with six children, three in college, two in high school, and me in elementary school. And she had never held a job. And she had to go out and find work. And she worked three jobs. But, you know, it's those people who make us who we are in our families. And I believe I'm a resilient person. And COVID's not going to get me down. And it's not going to stop me from teaching and loving and caring. And I think of all the things that I do as a teacher is that I share who I am. And I thank you for asking me about the painting well, because uh, Ruth, you are as beautiful, more than share. You are as beautiful as that painting behind you as your mother's painting. You mm -hmm. are you are you're a mentor of mine and to many and uh, you are just a huge inspiration. And I hope a million people get to see this interview because it is so great. It's, you've just given so much. Um, and that's just, everybody, that's just a little bit <laughs> of what you can experience if you ever sit in a rehearsal or a workshop with Ruth. So I just want to thank you for taking time to do this. And we may do this again when we get past remote learning and I do interviews still. There you go. I, I might keep doing this and we'll talk about repertoire or something. But we'll Okay, <laughs> sounds good. As well. But man, oh man, thank you so Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. My pleasure. And thank you for inviting me. It's, uh, it's very important to talk with colleagues and it's very important to stay connected. So thank I appreciate it.
Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. And please Thanks. watch this and like it and share it with everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.